What's up, YouTube? Um, so long time, no chat. You know, I know that all of you guys have been fiending for some Edison content. So I thought that this would be a great way to bring it back to, you know, the golden age of early spring. We were pumping out the videos. Keegan, my co-host, um, has been on a brief hiatus um, and he's busy with some IRL stuff, as am I. So we just decided that it'd be best to put it on pause, but I feel like I can put out the occasional video myself now and then. And uh, this was a particularly memorable game. Just some uh, housekeeping stuff. We are planning uh, another Edison tournament. Um, can't give you a specific time on when this will be, but probably later August or early September, I would say. And we definitely appreciate all the support. The Discord is still going. Um, again, I've taken a little bit of a break just over summer. But uh, anyone that wants to send us deck lists or cool replays to review, please do so. I'll check the messages as best I can. And you can always find me on Duel Book or on the Discord. But uh, without further ado, I want to get into this game because some pretty uh, interesting things happen. Like I said, I haven't been playing a lot. And it was like the third time I've said that. But um, this was one of the few games that I decided, um, you know, I, I would I would rejoin. And uh, just some random late night game against AKBG. So let's get right into it. Um, I'm playing a Volcanic Quick Draw deck, and I think maybe I've used this deck on the channel before. Um, I'm going to only show my hand because I kind of want you to experience this as I experience it. Sorry for the spoilers already. But um, he's going first. He draws the six. You know, I have a pretty good hand. I open Dust Shoot and Storm. Um, so, you know, can't, can't complain about this. So he immediately does something pretty surprising, right? Like sending the Aqua Dolphin for absolute zero. And that's not a commonly a commonly played card. I know it got played like to bait out hand traps much later on, but uh, I don't think I've ever played again. I, I, maybe one Neospatian guy used this against me, but, um, but and then the Prisma too, it's like, okay, so you have Prisma in the deck, you have the Neospatian. So I'm a little confused, but I think that I, as a player, I'm pretty good at adapting to weird scenarios like this. So, uh, it's been a minute since I've watched this replay too, but let's just see what I do. So I go for the Blaze Accelerator. I figure that if he's playing some kind of combo deck, maybe it's best just to clock him down quickly. And if I have the Storm for the future version anyway, I don't need to Ryko it right away. Um, so I'd rather just get the damage in. And I do it in this order because it gives me a better chance of milling a Dandelion or a Shell off the charge. The Blaze Accelerator is already out of the deck. So that's just some simple sequencing stuff. Um, if I attack, you know, I guess maybe Kogodi here would be kind of annoying, but... I just decided to dust shoot right away because I don't I don't want any nonsense and so I will show the hand. Um, it is dark armed. Um, sorry, dark armed. I had to close the window. Really. Dark armed at King of the Swamp, eager on Neos, polymerization, miracle fusion, eager the emergency call. So I don't know about you, but I've never played against a deck like this and I don't know really what is going on. But given that he has no dark monsters and, and unless he goes e-call, Stratos, Search, uh, Diamond Dude, or Malicious, I don't really see a way for him to get to a lot of dark monsters. So I'm not too worried about the dark armor right now. Um, so I send back King of the Swamp, just seeming that that's you know, gonna get him Waters and Grave. That seems to be the best combo card here. Um, and he does search in dark and does go for an absolute zero. But I have answers to this, you know, I can uh, storm and set the Ryko, you know. So we're just trucking along. But yeah, King of the Swamp just seemed like the most live card in his hand. Um, I do storm just because, you know, that would, that would hurt me a lot next turn um, because I really need to Ryko. Oh, no, sorry, I need to sang in. But so he draws a, a card here. Sorry, he, he summons the Diamond Dude. It went a little fast. Summons the Diamond Dude, mills the Fusion Recovery, which also, okay, Fusion Recovery. Um, I'll stop showing his hand now. Um, 
I'll just show mine. But yeah, so not great that he hit this. But I get my Fangen off and um, I decided to search Shell. Even though I'm going to be really low, I know that his hand is mostly dead. And, and even though I know he can polymerization and use the fusion recovery, it still requires him to draw a monster. And I just rather pop everything, set my Raikou. Um, and I'm thinking that, okay, I'm going to be pretty low, but I don't think he can kill me through the Raiko with what he, with what I know that he has. Um, and so I'm able to pop all three, um, average everything back. And so, you know, knowing that he has a mostly dead hand, um, and I have drawn to a trap, which is great. I mean, I, this game I've been really hurt by not, uh, not having a lot of traps, but he does draw water. Um, came small pull of that doesn't mess around that here, but and then is able to use his fusion recovery. So you know, kind of fortunate, but it's not that big a deal. I'm sure his deck has a lot of waters and other uh, fusion materials in it. But it's Raiko, and again, I'm feeling okay because now I feel like the game is stabilized. He got the polymerization and Neos back, but he still has the dead dark armed with only one dark engrave. So he needs to draw like consistently more fusion materials, and I still have more Raikos to deal with that. He just passes. Um, I set my Raiko, I set Dandelion, and now he finally does use the polymerization. And this is where this is where things get a little out of hand. Because, I mean, knowing what, I, I, maybe this is my fault for not fully reading or understanding the full range of hero fusions in this format. But so I'm thinking he makes a third absolute zero, he, you know, I don't know, one of the other janky fusions, I don't know. But he drops this guy. And so, Let's just pause here. So he fuses with this, which is a dark, and I think is basically impossible to summon. Banish seven darks, different names. I think you're never going to summon in this deck. Uh, it's not even like a trade in target or anything. Um, and then this guy. I have never seen this monster before. I have never seen it summoned before. I'm not even 100% sure it's Edison legal. I, I guess it is. So don't let it hear nearest one ultimate crystal monster. This is an always treated as an ultimate crystal card. Okay, again, I've like never seen this before. 4,500 attack, 3,000 defense. But I'm thinking, okay, well, but I have my monsters, right? And I have Mirror Force, that's home. Okay, well, now we get to the effect, which is it has three different effects that you can um, choose one of. So you can send a monster you control the graveyard and shuffle all monsters I control to the deck. Um, and you can use all this stuff with priority too, right? So you can send one spell or trap card to the graveyard and shovel all spell traps. And as you can see, I have many spell traps because I have to follow them to protect me from like a heavy storm or something. You can send one card from the top of your deck to the graveyard and shuffle all the cards in my graveyard um, into the deck. So this becomes a bit of a threat. And so he sets a card intending to use, you know, the, uh, the effect to bounce all my traps. But um, I MST it, thinking that, you know, I'm going to lose the MST anyway, so I might as well just trade and make him have another spell if he's going to do it. And so he does do it, puts everything to the deck. But again, I'm, you know, he just trades with the Raikou. So I'm still thinking, all right, you know, now now my other Avarice is live. I have a pretty good defensive monster as far as the Dandelion. Um, and I just drew a quick draw, which is great. I can tribute summon and make a Drill Warrior, and, you know, do anything like that, um, which I do. And... Um, you know, maybe there's an argument here. I could pitch one and swing with both, but I decided to make Turbo Warrior. I'm trying to remember the exact thought process here, but I'm I'm thinking that I think it. That my thinking was that if he did have another miracle, um, then Absolute Zero would only crash with this. Um, because I know his hand, I know his hand right now is dark armed and an unknown, I guess, but, uh, something I didn't play last turn and like probably not a monster he could normal summon. So I decided to go for this. I could have maybe pushed for more damage, but, uh, I didn't want to leave really anything in attack. So, you know, maybe this is arguable, but yeah, so he, I mean, that game ended quickly, but he, Convert contracted, discarded dark monster, which puts him at the third dark, um, and then 
sent a water monster, it didn't matter. He was just at three darts and then we summoned the dark arm, swung out with the turbo warrior, killed me. And so I don't really think there was anything there that, um, like anything I could have put on the board really that would have not lost that combination because yeah, I mean, the, maybe maybe if I made a turbo warrior in defense mode or something like that, um, but I think he can still even pop it because it's it's uh, level six or higher. Um, but so we're on to game two. And, you know, probably like many of you, I've lost to many absurd, strange cards in in Edison and beyond. And so I'm not really tripping. I'm like, wow, I've never seen that card before. But um, I'm thinking that with some careful side decking, you know, I'm going to win game two. I don't like to lose. So I'm I'm going to win these other games, right? Set the Raikou. Set the book. You know, a fairly dead hand. You could do a kind of wombo combo thing where you make a drill, but you're not really even going to have much to get back with the drill. So I don't really like to do that. He does do the convert contract again. It's a super powerful card if you can get it off. Um, and he mills. Doesn't hit with the diamond dude, thankfully. I just pop. Um, mill some monsters. And I decided to get a little aggressive here um, by summoning this, but still not overextending into his back row because I'm thinking, you know, a lot of times these super uh, combo heavy decks, you know, maybe the one trap they play is like Torrential or something like that. So I didn't want to just go quick draw a shell, get Torrential there, and then kind of have, be in a rough spot. And I still, I mean, I have the debris, I have Fader that are nice to get back, but uh, not a lot of super juicy targets. Um, but he recklesses, drops the gores. Okay, you know, he got me there. Um, but now he's still under reckless, and I'm still feeling like, I mean, I have play, right? I have I have Excel for however many monsters he puts on board, three, and I can still quick draw, discard this, um, make a six, tribute for Caius, you know, I have play. Um, but I am gonna take a bunch of damage here. I didn't really see much point in booking this uh, because again, like I want to prioritize keeping as many defensive cards as I can um, against a deck like this, if he decides to pop off with some polymerization stuff. Um, so I thought that keeping the rocket was not super important. Um, I just decided to take a little bit of damage and I thankfully draw a dandelion. And again, I know he's on, you know, the same cards that he had last turn. Um, so I'm able to remember exactly what I do here. Yeah, okay, I just pop both, um, get the shell, trade off, and now I'm, I got a loop going and some powerful stuff. I have a defensive card. He has another convert contract, which I guess he couldn't have used last turn because he had the gores. Um, he probably drew into it off the, and then he, uh, he plays the miracle because my bad, I can't play this, but he can play it. He has a time of dude and a water. Uh, I don't know if he was just confused or what, but it's, you know, honestly, this is unranked, so I let him take it back. But, so I get back my drill. Um, what do I get back here? Fader or something? No, I get back Dandelion. Um, okay, and then I pitch again. Oh, I have, I think I have game here. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I, especially knowing the Gores is gone, this boosts up my Nitro Warrior, and uh, it's actually lethal just by the attack, but I also had Caius distribute um, target itself. So that game ends pretty quick. This is kind of how I expected the game to go, but I open another pretty slow hand here. Um, and that will be my downfall. Um, so we convert contracts again. Blah, 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 draw, draw, floor, draw, set two. I'm assuming these are both recklesses or, you know, it, again, could still be a torrential, um, but I'm not really that worried. I'm, I'm kind of assuming he doesn't play much like actual battle traps. So I was pretty content with just swing direct, um, kind of at this point, assuming they are both reckless. So I banish this, I set Sangin because I'm thinking that if he if he double recklesses here, which spoilers he does have, and he then he's gonna have so many cards and have such a loaded grave that I think it's pretty likely he's gonna be able to kill me. So I decided to set Sangin knowing that I battle Fader in deck, um, thinking that that might be the only way I can survive this turn. Um, and Lo and behold, convert contract, blah, 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 boom, boom, summons this guy. And now, you know, even the best light of plans, me uh, searching the battle fader with Sangin, I'm realizing now that this guy can bounce all these to the deck and uh, I wouldn't get my Sangin search. So I'm 
hoping he doesn't do that or hoping he doesn't have enough juice to, to tribute a monster and still kill me through that. But instead, he just summons Dark Armed, pops both my monsters, and, you know, I got to assume he had another monster um, to summon or another Miracle Fusion or something like that, because this was 73 and I'm at 9,000. So I assume he was just trying to kill me there. But so luckily I searched the Vader. I get another turn, but then he does this thing. <laughs> Even despite reading this card, kind of forgot. He mills a guard and puts all my guys back to the deck. So now my average is dead too. And the drill warrior has, it's not gonna have anything to get back. So this is a problem. This is a big problem. Um, and I decide to just poke him for, oh no, sorry. I, I take the damage because he's not lethal on board. And I, I know that basically the only way that this is gonna work out for me is if I, you know, I, I see another draw step. So I know that I need to stall out another turn, essentially. Um, so this all happens and I discard my Avarice. Um, thinking now, maybe I didn't really need to set the Riker here, but I think I, I wanted to burn, oh I, yeah, I wanted to burn his last Dark Armed negate or dark time to banish because i'm thinking that also that if i drop fader then maybe i could draw a caius or something um but this is all my last dish effort to win and so okay he again does a third effect just to blank my drill warrior getting to raiko and now i'm thinking okay if i draw a shell here maybe i can do something but unfortunately it's gonna be curtain because uh yeah, I mean, there's not really any uh, synchro I can make here with the quick draw. Best I could do is a uh, Turbo Warrior or something like this, but doesn't, none of these are affected by that. Volcanic Rocket doesn't do anything. Really, there's no there's no play here. So uh, with that, I lose, and I hit him with a little bit of salt of you drew your combo. But overall, I mean, I got to say this guy played I mean, fairly well, I, I, I guess. Um, he definitely drew his combo and it's a pretty creative deck. He also seems to run this card, Space Gift, nuts, insane inclusion. Um, and overall, I just thought you would enjoy this video of me getting kind of, uh, let's just say it, sacked into oblivion. But with that being said, um, as always, like, comment, subscribe. I'll try to put up more videos occasionally. Um, and shout out to Keegan in his absence and keep on playing Edison, enjoying Edison.